thoughts, feedback on any of the power shrug or the muscle snatch, muscle clean that we've done rather first? Shrug feels like a very short range of motion. Yeah. Like doesn't really feel like you're going anywhere. Yeah, and that's why it's a little, sometimes a little tricky to grasp. Some people's like, but I haven't done anything. But you have. You create an enormous tension. And then when you jump, like if you watch people like do a, a gather jump, the actual jump is from here to here. It's this tiniest range of motion. But the tremendous amount of force they put into the ground during that motion is what we're chasing. So that's why you can go heavy with this because of that short range of motion. It's effectively the power equivalent of an IMTP. Getting to the position where you have your absolute maximum biomechanical advantage against the bar, and you're just going to work from here to here. And we're just trying to generate power, not strength. We think of strength and hypertrophy as range of motion. Power is more about impulse and tension, which don't really require range of motion so much. Yeah, It's a tricky one to grasp. Once you've got it, though, it's fun. You can go really heavy after that. Um, out of the slings or out of the spotting arms as well work too. Kind of dump into those. Anything else on those? Yeah, quick one. Yep. Um, I guess there's so many different variations you can do that when you're working with an athlete, are you sort of looking to see whether he or she grasps the quicker? Like if they grasp, like I felt like that was not very easy, but a lot easier to grasp. That was your, your best one so far in terms of, yeah. That's your exercise then, yeah. So you sort of have to figure that out and guess with the athlete as well? Yeah. As, as athletes ourselves, because we ourselves lift as coaches, we have our personal preferences. Like personally, I like an above the knee power clean. That's the one that suits me best. I can go heavy, get a bunch of power, a bunch of watts into the bar. I'm good at the catch. It feels nice. But I know for the majority of the athletes I work with, a dumbbell snatch is going to be much better because it's easy to teach. They have mobility restrictions. They have less body awareness than I do. They're going to be younger than I am. So the dumbbell snatch paired with a heavy squat is going to be the best alternative for them if, if we have to Olympic lift. Remember, you don't have to. You could do, the majority of athletes, is actually some form of plyometric or box jump is actually going to be a better option. But if we are going to Olympic lift, it'll be something different to what I like. So then it's a matter of, as coaches, working out, okay, philosophically, what exercise gives me what I'm chasing? What am I chasing here? Or I'm chasing intent to move. I want them to be more violent and more aggressive when they lift. I want velocity, and I want PAP. So therefore, a snatch variation is going to be better. But you start snatching with the athlete, turns out they're really poor overhead, they don't get the idea, they can't get the bar to float. Okay, well, maybe it's some form of shrug or high pull instead, and you change it. And you, you're starting at the bottom, you know, starting low down on your progression continuum, working your way up, but along the way, you're being willing to jump from barbell to dumbbell, from clean to snatch, from snatch to clean, to push presses, to jerks. Like, there's different things we're sort of zigzagging around for as we go, kind of thing, yeah. Uh, did that answer your question? Yeah. So it's very much horses for courses, very much what individuals like and what they're good at, uh, and then cashing in on that. Like, once they find something they like and they're invested in, get after it, chase your gains there, yeah. But that doesn't mean you don't also push them on things they're not comfortable with to put them outside their comfort zone and, and challenge them a bit, but it's finding your right time. And that's just, that comes back to art of coaching stuff, yeah. Cool. Power cleans, okay. We're going to start above the knee again, but in this series, we're going to do above the knee, below the knee, from the floor. I want you to try them all as we go through. Same rules that we talked about with the snatch from before. So above the knee, it pop and catch. This is quite light, so I'm going to get quite a high catch in terms of my squat position. But if it was heavier, I'd get lower into my front squat position when I catch it. So, like so. Elbows go high, bar stays close to the body, violent shrug, soft on the catch. Let's play around. Start with maybe a baby bar, start with 25. Feel free to jump into the 40 as well. Let's go two or three sets, one or two above the knee, one or two below the knee, and we'll wrap up cleans. Beautiful. Would you make sure when you start progressing this that they've been doing front squats at some point? Yeah, Teo just asked a great question. Before starting power cleans, would you make sure they've been front squatting? Yes. They would do that clearance test we did in terms of can they hold a rack position, can they do a front squat, and we probably have them front squatting for three, four weeks, a month, whilst doing the progressions to a full clean, or while teaching them a snatch with the plan to then progress the snatch and the front squat into a power clean or something like that. Yes, great question. Nice. A little more legs, Tara. 
Good, you just need more weight. That's just too easy for you. Yeah, too light, for sure. One tendency people will have, both clean and snatch, as it gets heavy, they'll start hip hitting, where they kind of drag it up into their hips and then kind of like just flick it literally physically off their hips. Try not to do that. You're going to get a lot of forward, backward movement on the bar. You'll have seen, I did that in my videos in the, in the theory stuff. Apologies for that. That's a bad thing. It's a naughty habit I used to have. Good, Julia. Don't. Less arms, more legs. There, yes, nice. Very nice, Tara. There you go. I missed it. Good job, Tara. Have a rest, have a rest. Yep. You sort of like jump and hit that landing, whereas other places you obviously can't win. So I was like, Tara, is there any. Yeah. So, yeah, so should you jump, should you not jump, yes, I suppose? Whereas I kind of leave the ground. Um, the heavier it gets for me, the less I do that, because the weight keeps me down. Yeah. Really what we're doing, we're trying to create vertical power. And so how we do that will depend. So the heavier the weight, the more vertical power I create through bar displacement, yeah. as opposed to body displacement. Okay. So that jump, if you think about how much weight can you lift with the maximum amount of power, the jump is actually an inefficiency. Yeah. So I'm not chasing that, but I'm also not stopping athletes to do that if we're still in the teaching phase and we've got light weights. Okay. So it's like, it's like Olympic lifting is just loaded jumping. But instead of moving you, you move the bar. And so at the moment, on that 25 for me, I'm doing a bit of both, because that's a bit light for me. Whereas you put 40, 50, maybe even 60 kilos in my hand, that jump goes away very quickly. Yeah. Does that mean if you're coming off the ground, then you can break it? Yeah. But you've also got to remember, that's not the only factor, because you've also got to weigh in the catch. The catch is also a big factor in how heavy you can go and how well you can get into that position. So yes, from a, from a purely from a power point of view and concentric point of view, but the eccentric factor might also limit the amount of weight you can lift. So consider both those factors, yeah. It's a good point though. Good question, James. Happy? Have you tried something? Yeah, how'd it feel? All right, um, I think my, my elbows. Elbows are starting to come up, and then when you do that, you're gonna like muscle the end of the... Can I have a look? <laughs> Tight. Yeah, there's a bit of, like, the big thing with cleans is there's a bit of fear about your chin and your teeth. Yeah. And I reckon you're just trying to keep it away a little yeah, bit. I, I did that before and I kind of like... Because your power is quite good on the bar. Like, you're getting good pop off the hips. Like, that's, not, that's a better one. Because I, th I think, don't think it's so much she's wrestling it from here to here. It's more from here to here. It's like, I'll clean to here, clear my teeth, and then I'll just gently bring it into my shoulders. <laughs> You're also doing a little bit of kind of yeah. dipping around on the, on the baseline. So get, to the mid, get to that mid-thigh position, tighten everything up, tense up like a spring, and then explode. There you go. Nice one. I think it's just catch comfort. Just, you haven't, I'm guessing you haven't spent much time in a rack position. No, no. Yeah, so if, you have, if you're not very familiar with this, then you're not going to be very comfortable with that at velocity, yeah. which makes perfect sense. 